Hey everybody and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. We're excited and pleased today to have Michael Litt. Now Michael is the co-founder and CEO of Vidyard. And Vidyard's a really interesting story and it's, it's only getting more interesting as the days go by. So we want an update from Mike because he's got some exciting news to share. So Michael, great to have you. Great to be here. Thank you so much. This is, this is a return interview. Return visit. Yeah, it's great. A lot of things have happened in uh, two years. So, Mike, give us a little bit of a backgrounder on Vidyard. What, what are you guys doing and who are you doing it for and how are they benefiting from using Vidyard? That's a great question, Alan. So, Vidyard is what we call a video intelligence platform. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of organizations are using video essentially to market and sell their products. It's a great communication medium. Uh, it's ubiquitous across all categories inside of a business. Right. And as millennials become purchasers in B2B organizations, they expect video to be part of that process. Yes. They also expect to sell with video. And so what we do at Vidyard is build tools to allow organizations to essentially sell, train, learn, educate with video. And uh, we've been doing that now for about five years. Yeah. And you started with uh, Devin. Yep. Devin Galloway is your co-founder. And how has the team uh, matured since, since five years ago? Uh, five years ago, the company was literally Devin and I in my bedroom at the University of Waterloo right. running the first few lines of code. And uh, as a lot of people know, we started as a video production company making videos for clients. And then the product requirements for Vidyard came out of talking to customers and working with them uh, to deliver those videos. And so over the years now, um, we've had subsequent rounds of financing, most of them led by Silicon Valley based venture capitalists. And uh, the team has grown by orders of magnitude year over year. And that the last time we chatted here, I was thinking about it on the drive over, we were probably in the area of 25 mm -hmm. people. Yep. And uh, we just passed 125 with uh, 17 starting uh, within the next six weeks. So it's wow. been, a, been quite the cycle. <laughs> so th this growth has been uh, dramatic. And I know that um, it's not going to end at 125 plus 17. You have plans. You're, you're moving from your, your current environment uh, to a new environment here in the Waterloo region. Yep. And you're thinking about having how many people on the team? Yeah, so the facility that we're renovating right now is at 8 Queen Street. It's the original Gaudi's department store, yes. which is very exciting. It's a place my mom used to shop at 50 yep. years ago. Yep. And uh, we're building that space out um, to a maximum of 300 seats, uh, which we anticipate will be filling within the next 18 to 24 months. But every time we look back at the people plan and every month that goes by, we get more validation in our hiring model. Right. It looks like uh, that estimate might be conservative on the long end. Okay. Uh, how are you connecting the skills and wisdom you're building in helping other people uh, with their business success? How are you using it to help the Vidyard success uh, keep, keep pace? Yeah, so we, when, we, uh, when we hit about, I would say, 60 people, I was in Mexico over uh, the Christmas break and I got really sick and so I couldn't be outside and there was something in the food, I imagine. And uh, I spent the whole trip. Couldn't have been in the ice cubes, but in the uh, food somewhere. somewhere. Probably somewhere. salad. Somewhere in there. And uh, I think it was the tartare I had on the first night, actually. <laughs> now that Good we, choice. Now that we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? It looked great. Um, bad decision. It ruined the whole week. <laughs> but it did allow me to think a lot about the company and the culture and how it had evolved over the previous few years. Right. And I wrote a document which is the Vidyardianism document, yes. which everyone uh, reads. And if they agree with the statements of the document, it talks about aspects of our culture. Um, there might be some profanity in it, but it is a pretty closely guarded secret to the organization. Right. You sign this as an amendment to the company. And one of the corporate values, or the only corporate value that this document talks about, is something that we call win with experience. And so winning with experience is something that we think about as it relates to the customer experience, as mm -hmm. it relates to the onboarding experience, the training experience, even as it relates to the departure experience from the company. Brilliant. And it's the one thing that we can think about with every decision that we make to kind of parlay to the rest of the organization. So as we're onboarding individuals, we're thinking about winning with experience. We're thinking about the collective intelligence of the company, applying it to them, to ultimately help the business's success because that bleeds through to the customer. And without the customer, we are not successful. Right. So it's a bit of a cyclical thing that has worked really well so far. Yeah. Now the big question is how do we sustain that 
mm -hmm. through doubling your headcount again over the next 18 months. Right. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Mike, because too many people in, the, in our businesses think that headcount is, you know, a measure of success. Mm -hmm. that there's the metric. Hey, we're, we're now 300 people, and, and it's only a metric if you're 300 happy, yes. focused people, yep. as opposed to just, no, I've got 300 bums in the seat. Yeah. To that point, we always investigate our employee NPS, which is net promoter score. Would yes. you recommend working at Vidyard? Yeah. And I'm happy to say that within the last four weeks, we did one of these surveys and the survey, survey result came out at 98%, Ooh. which is not 100. Uh, however, uh, we had a bit of a, we had one survey outstanding and mm -hmm. we had a bit of a witch hunt to find out who it might have been. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out it was me. So if I had completed the survey, which I forgot to do, and there was this whole, and I was standing in front of the company talking about it, it would have been 99. Uh -huh. So there's still this one happy, unhappy camper in the business. Mm. But um, hey, it's, that, that's something great. that we have to sustain. And it's, you know, it's so important as, as you nurture the, the culture is to have the, the, the mini outliers who, yeah. can, who can point out, hey, whoa, just a second. There's something wrong here. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can improve that. So how do you, how do you bring the happiness out in this culture at Vidyard? You know, millennials, I mentioned in kind of the intro, mm -hmm. um, aren't about material possessions, they're about experiences, right? Experiences are, are the new currency. And working in a startup is certainly an experience where you can learn a lot at a very fast pace because okay. the startup has the choice to bring in hired guns, to apply their experience to the business, and or to elevate people inside the organization mm -hmm. as the company grows, which right. means you're drinking from the fire hose, you're learning very quickly. So. Right. A purpose-built organization means that there is a purpose that people feel is holistic and can essentially help the world, uh -huh. which we try to be. We only succeed if our customers succeed. We only succeed if our customers win with experience. Right. But it also goes beyond the business and our impact on our customers. The vast majority of our customers are US-based. The reality is we're in downtown Kitchener, which is a highly changing community. Right. What can we do as an organization with 120, 130, 140, 300 people to actually impact the downtown area? Yes. And so we've, we've actually started an initiative called Plugin, whereby we're donating our time and resources to building events for the tech community yeah. and people who essentially want to come out, experience a new venue, where all proceeds go to a local charity because the vibrancy of downtown Kitchener is why we're there, right. and we don't want to lose it, and we've seen right. that happen in San Francisco. So adding that kind of purpose-driven yeah. aspect to the culture, doing Victoria Park cleanups, impacting our local area is a huge right. part of, of what we've become, yeah. and uh, that helps me feel more wholesome about ultimately what we do, and right. same with the rest of the team. Okay, so let's talk about the future where you you've been a startup and you've and you've succeeded by it and I think it's because you've been innovative in terms of not just the technology but in terms of meeting the customers wants needs demands yep I think you've figured out or you're constantly figuring out what can we do next that's going to make the customers uh, not just happy but delighted and talk about us yep. in, in the community Wow you've done a great job there yeah, so there's, there's a lot of ways we think about innovation. Um, being the category leader. So about three years ago, we said, okay, the video marketing platform categorically makes sense. Companies are investing yes. in video. There needs to be a platform, a, a, um, a source of record for those individuals. And so we went out to build that. We went out to build that category. Then what we saw was the competitive landscape started calling themselves a video marketing platform and started developing to feature parity. And so this is a big market. Um, we are the fastest growing in the market. And to sustain our position of leadership from both a thought and product perspective, we need to be the most innovative company in the segment. And the reality is, is we came up with the idea for this. We saw the need. We worked towards what is relative product market fit. Right. Now we essentially need to support our customers further. And what happens at this stage is you get customers and you can talk to customers as often as, as necessary and it's one of my favorite things to do and they will tell you what they want right. and building something people want is a is a sure way to success but the problem is every customer wants something that is slightly different yeah. and so it's up to us as a product and engineering focused organization to take those wants and infer what the customer actually needs and so things like personalization yes. things like Vidyar Live things yes. like our attend bundles are essentially products of that discovery and research. And that's something that 
Devin, my, my co-founder, owns largely and, and we collaborate on. Yep. But the whole business from sales through to support, through to engineering, everybody has a very um, attentive focus on delivering for the customer, right. which goes back to the core mentality of winning with experience. Yeah. If you're winning with experience, therefore the person on the other end of what you're doing has a good experience, then you're probably acting with integrity. Right. Right. And you can essentially roll up every single one of every other company's values into this concept of winning with experience. And so if every decision you make is couched in this simple concept mm -hmm. of winning with experience, yep. chances are you're going to be an awesome company to work for. You're going to build a wicked product that yep. people actually need, and it's going to come deeper and deeper from there. Right. So win with experience really has worked in every single box we've stuffed it in. And uh, I hope other, uh, other organizations pick it up because it's been really productive for us. Excellent. For a company that's, that's five years old, you're doing things that are really, really smart. And you don't always see that in an emerging company. So I think you've gone from a startup to a scale up. And one of the, one of the signs that I know is, is, is making that come true is that you as a co-founder, you've gone out and you've recruited a president and a chief operating officer to join Vidyard. Yep. And, and the person you found, of course, is exceptional. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about how that decision was made and who you recruited? Yeah, uh, I'll start with the decision. So um, as a company grows, as a founder, you hire people uh, to essentially solve the problems that you don't have time for, right? So Devin and I always look at the company as a gigantic dam full of leaks. And one of us puts our finger in one of the leaks and then looks around for someone whose finger is better at plugging that leak, plus all the other ones around it. Right. We plug those fingers in, and then we go off and find more leaks. Yeah. Now that works up to a point. But what you'll find is at about 100 employees for us, it probably happened earlier, but didn't necessarily recognize it as soon as I could have. You have a bunch of people that all have their fingers in, in leaks and they're looking around and they're seeing other leaks, but they have no idea what to do about them. And all their fingers are in all of these leaks. And I found myself essentially couched with a lot of direct reports um, and more leaks than I had fingers for. And then started dealing with things in the business that ultimately aren't my strengths right. and I don't have experience in. And so right. Devin, my co-founder and I went out and grabbed a beer and, and talked about what we are good at and how the business started and where we were now and how where we started being thought leaders, being out there, uh, thinking about product, talking to customers, being involved in sales was something that we weren't necessarily doing as much anymore. Uh -huh. We wanted to get back to. Right. And we also found ourselves post Series C with a big war chest that we needed to execute against to hit a very lofty goal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the business goes from zero to a million dollars in revenue. That's a, that's a journey. The business yep. goes from a million to 10 million in revenue. That's a very different journey. Exactly. But the business going from 10 and beyond to 100 to 200 million in revenue is a completely different animal. Yeah. And we had known an individual who had done that seven times prior. Wow. Um, one failure, six successes sure. um, that we had followed in a career that also worked for another Canadian company. And it turns out that that individual became available in January. And uh, I called him up and had a conversation with respect to solving those challenges and looking at our dam and yeah. helping us figure out how to plug those leaks and build a bigger dam that's going to hold more water. Right. Back to the analogy. <laughs> and so this individual's name is Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson, yeah. And uh, his most recent role as COO was at a company that a lot of people know of called Hootsuite, Hootsuite. which is based in uh, Vancouver. Vancouver, yeah. And so Steve joined us about uh, five weeks ago now and is currently back at HQ looking at that dam. <laughs> You know, you're still the guy and Devin's still the guy, but now you've got Steve. Um, how is the culture reacting to that in its first stages? Yeah, you know, I think in the end of the day, it's all about enterprise value. Yeah. And everyone in our business yes. is a business owner. Right. And so Steve being involved means essentially that he's going to increase the enterprise value. And he's also someone that is going to teach all of our people what the next generation of a company looks like. And in the end of the day, what people do after Vidyard is truly what matters most for this community and this community's development. And so I think everyone is very excited to have him here. So right. he's now in the business and, and advising and coaching 
And one of the most important things I think about Steve's success in our business thus far is that he is an incredible culture fit. And he wants to build a value-based organization right. where customers buy because they will be successful, not because they're pressured to buy, right. et cetera, et cetera. So, so far, so good. Yeah. Um, he's an amazing culture fit. Excellent. That's great. We'll have to do a fist bump on that. Yeah. Boom. Thank you. Oh, we're going to make it explode. Whoa. Sorry, mine was a delayed fuse. Yeah, yeah. It's kids today. <laughs> okay. So what's the future, Michael, for, for video, um, that interactive yeah. video platform. What, where's this going to go? You guys did some amazing things on the personalization. And the belief with video personalization is that as with the merge tag and email, personalized video is essentially going to become table stakes. Right. So when we look at video as the, the center of kind of the marketing and sales framework, there's a lot of pieces that need to exist around it. And so there's, there's personalized video for event outreach, for campaign based outreach. Right. There's video that sits on your website that might be thought leadership assets, mm -hmm. something that we're creating right now. Right. Um, it might be customer testimonials, but those need to be easily accessible for your customers uh, and your marketing team mm -hmm. and your salespeople to yeah. essentially send out. Then you've got events where videos happen live. And so let's say you have a thousand person in San Francisco mm -hmm. at our event Space Camp this year. Yep. Can we have another 15,000 tuning in online? Can we yeah. extend our audience? And how do we get them interacting with that online content? And how do we know if they're viewing? And how does that ultimately impact the sales thing? Right. So as we look at video in the center of this multi-spoked wheel, there's a lot of stuff that we can still pick off yeah. to help the marketer succeed with this communication medium. Right. And one of the most compelling things, which is actually kind of associated with sitting here in the felt lab, is that virtual reality is something that a lot of organizations are starting to invest in. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly B2B applications. And the center of a virtual reality experience is essentially going to be broadcast video to some degree and live yeah. video. Yeah. Like that's, that's the way I, we, you and I could be wearing headsets and yeah. sitting on our couches at home yeah. and just wearing, just wearing your socks. I mean, <laughs> uh, it could be a sock battle. And uh, we'd be wearing digital outfits that we right. bought online. Yeah. And the reality is we could have people experiencing that, tuning in, sitting yeah. in the audience, and understanding what they're looking at and when all those things as they relate to video analytics are so important to the organizations that could be investing in them. Right. And so as the world evolves and, and moves toward video as a better communication medium, as bandwidth becomes continuously commoditized and this stuff becomes cheaper and cheaper and more available to do, right. Vidyard is ideally going to be at the center of that multi-spoked wheel. Yeah. And that's ultimately how we're thinking about the future of our category. So a lot is yet to be defined, yeah. but that's what it is to be at the bleeding edge. What advice would you give to a upcoming entrepreneur who's still in the startup phase to get to where Vidyard is today? Uh, very, so very general advice. I mean, I, I meet with a lot of early stage companies and the one thing that seems to be paramount is I see a lot of founders who really sweat the small stuff mm -hmm. and wear the fact that they sweat the small stuff on their sleeve like a badge of honor. But in the end of the day, um, the most important thing for growth and success and sustainability of your company is actually customer acquisition. And there's multiple ways you can do that, right? right? You can go out there and hard sell and be really spammy and, and drive people to spend money on your product and get no value and ultimately churn. Or you can be a proponent of helping your customers succeed and you can invest basically 99% of your energy and time as a founder in making customers successful, being a purpose-driven organization. Right. And what I see is a lot of people who are focused on product, focused on culture, focused on doing the business, but not actually growing the business. Right. And I think founders just need to put themselves out there more and get in front of customers more and just really focus on growth and then make those hires right. to plug those holes in the dam. And when the time is right, bring in that senior person that rebuilds the dam. <laughs> <laughs> or says, I'm not sure we need a dam. Yeah. We may you know need what? a bridge. This river would have been great. Why did you dam it up? I yeah. mean, who knows, yeah. right? Who knows? Well, that's exciting. Well, Michael, it's always a pleasure chatting to you. And um, thank you. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, your organization and what you guys are doing. And thank you. Um, so keep, keep on doing that and yeah. keep getting that customer base growing. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. Right. Good man. So thanks for tuning in.
KQ's Blog and Grill.